Hi, this is Robert. And as you can see, I have the amplifier, the Nelson Pass F6 amplifier, most of the way together. It's on its uh, vibration feet, so it uh, wiggles a little on its feet. I was kind of shooting myself in the foot here. I was being overly cautious on the unit. Part of the reason why is I explained in the, the last episode, if you stayed awake for that, that the amplifier is a different design. It's quasi-complementary, not true complementary. And it ha that has an advantage in that you're using identical output devices with identical curves on the output and the matching on the same type of device can be much closer than it can ever be on complementary devices, say a P-channel MOSFET and an N-channel MOSFET. It's much easier to get a perfect match between two N-channel MOSFETs. So there is an advantage that Mr. Pass has gone with on the F6 that does give it, I've been told, a tube-like sound, which makes sense because most of your tube amplifiers are essentially, uh, I don't know if you can call them quasi-complementary, but you're taking the output off the plate of two identical type devices. And there's a transformer in the middle there to match the impedances to your speaker. So uh, when I first fired this up, I had set the bias pots in the middle, and with the uh, variac out of the system, the amplifier actually had a hum. It, the transformer was humming, so I immediately put it back on the variac. And when I powered it up and worked at it, I was able to get the biasing where it needed to be. I ran it up to uh, 500 millivolts. And that worked well, but as I mentioned before, I was also dimly lighting the uh, dim bulb tester. And that had me worried. So one of the things I did was to test that was to pull the uh, F5, the Nelson Pass F5 Class A amplifier, out of its summer retirement and fire it up on the dim bulb tester to see whether it lit the dim bulb tester. And it did, far brighter than the F6 was doing. I know the F5 works quite well. I mean, it's, uh, it worked for me for about six months, and then summer came and it got a little hot to be running it in the uh, living room. Up here in Washington State, we normally don't have air conditioning in our homes, so at least in the older houses like this one. I had to retire it and go back to uh, using the uh, Yamaha VFET amplifier for the summer, which the Yamaha runs kind of warm, but nothing like the, uh, the, the past five does. So uh, what that told me is that it's normal to have a Class A amplifier when biased up to dimly light your dim bulb tester. It's apparently... You're drawing, like I said before, on uh, when I initially had this biased, I had it at a 500 millivolt per channel, which is the equivalent of one amp of drain current per channel. Add that together, two amps for the whole amplifier, and yeah, I could see it lighting the dim bulb. So I went back and uh, I put the uh, F5 back, plugged the F6 in, turned it on without the dim bulb tester and uh, immediately got a loud hum and wondered, what the hell's going on? Shut it off. Actually, there was no, I shouldn't say immediately. Uh, it took a while for the amp channel to warm up and the bias to come on. Uh, that's a characteristic of this amplifier. And that may be due to those uh, big thousand mic capacitors. Pardon me that you see here in the, here's our bias circuit. And you have these thousand mic capacitors there. So it takes a while for the bias to respond. Makes it pretty stable though. 
So at, once the amplifier warmed up, I got this hum, and it's, this hum started coming in, and I noticed the bias was just shooting up. I uh, got well over a, a thousand millivolts. It was up over a volt, and that's when I uh, shut the amp off. And I'm thinking, why? And one other thing that I had noted with the amplifier on the dim bulb was that the uh, power supply rails were quite low. They were actually down around plus or minus 17 rather than the recommended plus or minus 24. And come to find out that was due to, again, the, uh, the voltage drop across the dim bulb. And when I pulled the dim bulb out of the circuit, the amplifier had plus or minus 24 volt supplies again, but the bias was set uh, fairly high to compensate for the drop across the dim bulb. So I had this super high bias current, and so I ended up cranking the uh, bias pots down 10 turns and was able to power the unit up then uh, in the range. So, so I was able to bias the amplifier up and it was in the normal range, which was good. That told me that the uh, zeners that I had chosen before are perfectly fine for the amplifier uh, when it's in a normal state, plugged into the wall rather than uh, plugged into a dim bulb tester that's dropping a significant amount of voltage due to the current draw of the amplifier. So I was able to crank the uh, bias current up to a normal value. I was able to adjust the uh, offset. Here you can see the offset down to single digits and the bias. When that appeared stable, I then put the amplifier front plate on and uh, so I could put a top cover on it. So the amplifier is 95% together. It just, I just have the top plate loose right now. And that's just to keep more or less a stable uh, thermal environment inside uh, during these initial tests. What I would recommend is I should have left the bias pots probably down around zero ohms and powered it. Uh, once I realized I had no offset, taken the amplifier off the dim bulb, powered it up just on the 120 volt AC, normal AC power, without the dim bulb, then run the bias up. The other thing I, you might try is to just run it up to about 50 millivolts or so of bias on the, uh, while the unit's on the dim bulb, and then pull it off the dim bulb, power it up on the normal AC level, and chances are you'll see that bias jump, probably double, but hopefully it doesn't exceed the normal range. I know it might work fine with the pots set in the middle and you power it up. I've messed with the pots for so long in this amplifier that I have no idea where the middle is again. Yeah, I really don't want to ohm it out again. I've biased it up now to uh, 600 millivolts and it was single digit offset and it is running fairly hot 52 degrees c on the output devices that worried me initially can you see that 52 that worried me initially but the bias instructions again on the diy website on the building instructions says that as long as you keep things under 65 degrees C, you're not stressing the output devices. I may be stressing my thermistor. I don't know what their, I'm going to look up what their normal operating temp is. It may be on the hot side. I may find that uh, this will work better if I put two thermistors in parallel on that input, keep the temps low. I don't know if it'll function as effectively that way, but it may add to the longevity of the thermistor. But anyway, I wanted to tell you that. I've been cautious. I've been way too cautious on this amplifier to where it uh, actually caused me a lot of extra work. But again, I'd rather be cautious than have an exploded amplifier on the bench. 
But anyway, I got the, uh, as you can see, I have the front panel on now. And this is my uh, sad attempt to make it look like an, a uh, first watt product. So I have the recessed Allen head screws, and then I have the uh, two blue LEDs on the front. Sadly, the, uh, my drill bits started chattering around a lot when I got up into the larger sizes. Even though I had brand new drill bits, it still kind of gouged up the holes when I did the countersink part on the uh, front panel. But anyway, things are looking good, and we are in the week of testing the unit, although I may have to postpone that till we get some cool days. We're into a hot day. It's probably going to be in the 80s this afternoon. It's at least 75 degrees to 80 degrees here in the house right now. And I turned the fan off so I could do this video. What I'm going to probably do is wait for a string of cool days and then do some burn-in tests on the amplifier. But anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you. Uh, things are looking good. Uh, the amplifier is appearing stout and strong. As you can see, the uh, bias and offset are quite steady. I Basically, this is about the third iteration of setting them, and I don't see much need to do more adjustment. I mean, it's, this is slowly climbed from 602, but I'm not terribly worried. It's not going to get very much higher. Just doing some uh, audio testing. We're into the reliability tests on the F6, and uh, I'm going to be uh, playing music on it for about a week, just to make sure everything's stable and happy before I hook it up to the magna planers. That's a little loud. Let's turn this down a bit there. Okay. So uh, that'll be going on. I'm kind of limited right now because it's very hot and smoky outside. I don't want to run a very hot amplifier during very hot weather. But other than that, things are looking good. Just wanted to give you an update. Thanks again for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this one didn't put you to sleep. And uh, next time we'll probably be talking about these speakers.